How to qualify for an SBA loan? I'll be going over exactly what you'll need for your business to qualify for a loan with the SBA. And I'll be putting it in order so you'll have a basic blueprint on what steps you'll need to take to have the best chance of qualifying for up to $5 million in funding. And if you stay till the end, I'll be sharing one of the biggest SBA secrets that few business owners take advantage of. The US Small Business Administration can give you some great interest rates and payment schedules, so I really like helping you guys learn how to get this money. Really, the right loan can make the difference between having your business hit a plateau or having your business grow into something that's even bigger than what you ever thought was possible. So this really gets me excited when I can help you do something so significant you can even surprise yourself. That being said, let's jump right into it. One of the things I regularly talk about is getting your business properly structured to qualify for funding. And this goes for qualifying for an SBA loan as well. So just as a quick review, you'll first need to register your for-profit business with the state. And then you'll need to get an employer identification number with the IRS. This is not that difficult to do and is really an essential part of giving your business its own identity. You'll also want to have your business registered with the largest business credit bureau currently out there named Dun & Bradstreet. Once you already have your for-profit business set up, this really only takes a few minutes. You'll do this by going to their website and then building a profile for your business where you'll receive what's called a DUNS number. Now, once you have that basic for-profit business structure set up, the US Small Business Administration is going to want to see a few other things from you before your company can qualify for that SBA loan. One of the requirements is that your company must meet the definition of a small business by the US Small Business Administration. This can vary pretty significantly based on what type of business you run, but there is a rough benchmark you can use to have an idea if you'll likely qualify. So to tell you what that is, most manufacturing companies with 500 employees or less will qualify, and most non-manufacturing companies with less than $7.5 in annual receipts will also qualify as a small business. Now, there may be a few exceptions, and you should look up your type of business specifically, but I have to imagine most of you business owners watching this video will likely meet their definition of a small business. One of the other requirements is the SBA will want to see you've already invested money and time into your business. The SBA loans are not just for someone walking into their office with an idea. They want to see that your company is already established and that it's something you'll stick with even when things get difficult. Now, there is no set amount of individual capital they expect for you to have put into the business to qualify for the loan. Really, if you were able to bootstrap a business to being profitable from nothing, and you did it with hard work and investing a lot of your own personal time, then that can work too. Okay, this leads me to your next requirement, and that's to attempt using other financial resources before applying for the SBA loan. Now, I want you to keep in mind that this does include personal assets as well. So if you've already invested some money into growing your business, this should help meet this standard. But beyond that, the SBA will likely want to see if you've already spoken with other banks or lenders before you approach them. Approaching other lenders simply to understand what they can offer you is often a good step to do before applying with the SBA anyways, because you'll really want to be able to compare the rates and loan terms of the SBA with other lenders. You can also show them other lines of credit you've already established for your business, from business credit cards to net 30 accounts. The SBA is going to want to not only see what other financial resources you've tried, but also if you have any significant business debt. And to throw this in there, remember to smash that like button. Hitting that like button is free, just like this video is free. And for hitting that like button, I'll give you one of the best secrets about the SBA at the end of this video. Okay, that leads me into the next requirement. Your business needs to show it's operating with a profit. If your company is just perpetually losing money, even the federal government isn't going to back your small business loan. They will want to see that you are already making sales or providing services before giving you money. So these SBA loans are meant more for growing your business than to get it out of deep financial difficulty. Now that doesn't mean you can't have any financial struggles. Most small businesses do. But just be prepared with financial statements that will prove your company is making money. Okay, let's talk about the next requirement. And that's showing a need for the money. Now, just as mentioned before, the SBA wants to see you're already operating with a profit. 
So showing a need for the money doesn't mean that you show them that your company won't survive without the loan. Really what this means is that you need money to invest in certain parts of your business to grow it to a new level of profitability. Some types of companies can really only gain efficiency after they reach a certain size. So it's often difficult to bootstrap your way to that level depending on your industry. So these loans are really meant to accelerate that growth. And that's what I generally recommend. Show the SBA how this loan will accelerate the growth and profitability of your company. Another big requirement that you're likely already doing is to show your company is conducting or will be conducting business within the USA. Since this is a US federal agency, they of course want to make sure that the companies they are helping are conducting businesses within the USA. Now just keep in mind, people often confuse this with needing to be a US citizen to get the funding. And that's not the case. You have to think that the U.S. government even wants foreigners investing and building businesses in the U.S. It really comes down to if you're creating jobs in the U.S., providing services in the U.S., and also paying appropriate U.S. corporate income taxes. And also your business can be conducting business outside of the U.S.A. as well, just as long as a portion of the company is operating within the U.S., Many of my businesses do have some revenue coming from overseas, especially if you're offering digital products or services, you will likely have some foreign sales, but that won't be a limiting factor. So consider this requirement as a simple qualifying factor rather than a limiting factor. It should be a simple box to check. Now the next requirement is that the loan will be used for a reasonable business purpose. You'll need to know how you plan on using the loan money before you go in and apply. Some options that have the best chance for approval include inventory and business equipment. Large quantities of inventory and expensive business equipment are often limiting factors to growing a small business. Because of this, the SBA regularly gives out loans for these two purposes. Other purposes you can consider proposing are staffing or research and development. Both of these can also get you funding, but be prepared to show the SBA how the loan will quickly put you on a path to be more profitable. Break down how you'll use that money to make more money. And honestly, I would say this is one of the most important requirements to have well laid out when applying for the loan. Between already being profitable and having legitimate plans for the money, a lot of the other requirements fall into necessary formalities. Okay, let's talk about another requirement. You can't be behind on any federal debt. I'll tell you, nobody knows the frustration of business tax filings more than I do. It's something most of you will likely need an accountant to help with. So keep this in mind when organizing your business early on. You'll need to find a good accountant, organize your banking, and pay your federal taxes if you want to qualify for an SBA loan. You'll need to do this anyway if you want to stay out of trouble, so you might as well plan for this from the start. Now, while some of those are the bullet point requirements, there's still a bit more to the process. They will require that the primary business owners submit their personal background and financial statements, along with personal resumes. With regards to the business, they will want year-end profit and loss statements and a year-end balance sheet. They will also want to see future projected financial statements so they can have a good idea on the expected profits of the business and its ability to pay off the loan. They will also want to know your company's loan history and if you currently have any business debt. One of the things I really should mention is the people who work at the SBA want to help you get funding. You have to think that their greatest reward is seeing small business owners succeed. So don't be shy going in for help with getting an SBA loan even if you don't have everything put together yet. Their staff is usually pretty good about consulting you through the process. I think the idea that you're working with a part of the federal government when you're trying to get an SBA loan is intimidating for some people, and I don't want that to stop you. Okay, for those of you who have stayed this long, I'll be sharing that secret about the SBA I promised at the beginning of the video. While we've talked pretty in depth about how to get an SBA loan, there's way more to the SBA than just funding. The SBA has small business development centers set up all around the U.S. to help small business owners succeed in essentially every capacity. These guys can be an incredible resource when you're first getting started. They will often help you formulate your business plan, get started structuring your business, help you organize your finances, and even more. 
I would say even if you don't need lending to try and spend at least a little bit of time in your nearby small business development center because they may have some great ideas on how you can best grow your existing company. Really savvy business owners learn to take advantage of all the free help they can get and leveraging the resources by the SBA is one that every entrepreneur should explore. Go ahead and smash that like button. Just as promised, I shared one of the best secret resources offered by the SBA. Hitting that like button is free, just like this video is free. Also, if you haven't yet, become an OG and click subscribe. I have a lot of other videos on how to get business funding and even a video that discusses free money through grants that you would find useful. Just as I mentioned earlier, every entrepreneur should take advantage of any free resource or cash offered by the government. I've known a lot of people who have built real businesses using these resources, so it is possible and common.